right. All right. So you, you explain. So I ask him a question about the source of baby chicks that are available that we use in our production of chickens. So let me tell you. Mm-hmm. Currently, estimate around seventy-five percent of the eggs that are used to provide baby chicks for the industry are imported. Jamaica Broilers, who is the only broiler company with a local hatchery, can mm. produce only 40% of their own fertile egg needs. So okay. you understand the situation. So w- when you when you take it into context, yeah. you realize that what I'm speaking about is taking a realistic, practical approach to firstly, most importantly, before you think about importing anything, we have to think about building resilience in our own mm. local sector. Why is Jamaica unable to produce its own baby chicks? Mm. Why are we unable to produce our own feed and fertilizer? Yes. Now it's because we haven't invested in the research. Okay. We keep on telling ourselves. So, different, so, diff- so the different kind of village rules that you're talking about. Eh? Uh, right. So the first step <laughs> is to focus, and we have said so in my mm-hmm. presentation, on building up Jamaican capacity to provide Jamaican goods and Jamaican production. Secondly, we have an immediate problem. I have an issue where small farmers and, and single mothers and those who go to the supermarket have a current problem. What's and that? the reality is that mm-hmm. if the broiler companies say that they are going to increase their price by 10%, as minister, I have to consider the impact that is going to have on everyone, particularly those who are the more vulnerable. And if I have an option to do what I can to make sure that I can assist in cushioning the blow, should I not do so? Mm. So this is just all sec- I'm saying. Uh, um, all I'm saying is a that text, a text came. Table. Just a second, Pernell. A text. Yeah. Uh, I see it. I remember Adrian, that's how you say I call him Pernell. It slipped out. Yeah, remember did yeah. that. <laughs> um, Doctor Taylor, ratio small chicken farmer, small chicken farmer texting from Saint Thomas, one hundred baby chickens. 15,000 22 bags feed 55,000 total 70,000 slaughter at 3 pounds 90,000 profit I don't know that's so, so yes. what he's saying yes what he's saying is minister why don't you help in boosting the local production and my response is small farmer I'm doing so. Mm. The first and most important thing that I've said in my presentation in Parliament is that immediately we're putting aside and ring fencing $50 million to help you do exactly what you said a while ago. But I have to think short, medium, and long term. And we have to think, as I said to you, in the long term, having the research capacity to be self-sufficient. In the medium and short term, putting in place the measures that are going to help us now to be able to, uh, to to cushion the blow and and really make the prices and availability more mm-hmm. affordable and more consistent. That's all that we're doing. And mm-hmm. you know, I must. I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged by the discussion um, on social media, on the radio. I'm encouraged by the calls. Because what it is saying is that people agree with me that one, food security is national security. And two, we have to build up our ability as a country to be self-sufficient. And three, as minister, if I have tools in a box, why am I hiding them? Why can't I put them out in the public for everybody to discuss? You can agree, you can disagree, but you won't get a chance to do so if I don't put it on the table. Now, mm. one, one of the things I want to be clear on, because I've heard this, and it's a mistake that many are making. We're not talking about chicken back, you know. And chicken next. What we're talking about in terms of this proposed potential suspension would relate to leg quarters. And this has not been done since 2008. Now, the consideration of doing it now comes with many risks that are attendant. Now, you know, we are scientists in various industries mm. that you don't eliminate something because it has a problem you fix the problem. And so, yes, I want it to be clear. This minister appreciates that the proposal of any potential suspension does have annexed to it some risk attendant. Mm -hmm. Those will have to be considered as we discuss with the ministry 
discuss with the stakeholders and define a mechanism to make sure it is transparent, accountable, and efficient. Secondly, the chicken back and chicken neck, those have been imported all the time. So those are not what we're talking about. We're talking about um, the leg quarters, which we can get at much more competitive prices now, because if you look on it, chicken back almost costs the same as a whole chicken. Just so, so leg, so... Um, and I know some of, some people are who are farmers are listening. In fact, I, one, I had a guest earlier on who is also um, a chicken farmer um, who's listening very keenly. Um, does a typical Jamaican farmer get involved in chicken parts or the or the chicken we call it leg quarters market? Or that's a particular niche occupied by um, whom? No, man. So my understanding, and, and remember now, I'm still immersing myself into the subject mm-hmm. here. This is week two. <laughs> this is what you call hitting the ground. Yes. Running. Uh-huh. Now, 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 my understanding is that the small farmers, the household farmers, backyard farmers, they, they, they are involved in the whole chicken. So they, they, they will sell the whole chicken uh, to, to the local supermarkets or mm-hmm. to friends or the family members. Um, but the big industry, of course, they have the larger capacity and processing capacity mm-hmm. to, to be more niche in how, uh, how they sell. Now, in, in other countries, there are some parts of the chicken that we may love that they don't see as, as premier or, or preferential part. And so the reality is that when you look on the global market, the cost for leg quarters is it's very, com- it's very um, affordable right now. And if I look on how much it costs us in Jamaica, I believe that the cost for leg quarters now in the local market is 360 per pound, while we would be able to import it at $100 and sell it to our consumers at 160 This means that I would be able, if it is that we have to use this measure, to cushion the blow for Jamaican consumers to purchase at least three times the quantity of meat that they can currently afford. All right. Again, so, remember. so, so in the short term, what you are saying that is that that, that based on what your understanding is, and you are this is just your second week as minister, right? Not, right. Um, the likely impact, bearing in mind the fact that you're talking about lake waters, which is not whole chicken, uh, the yes. likely, likely impact on farmers who sell the entire chicken um, is not like is not like no. to be that significant. That's one. No, because we are unable to meet the demand. Okay. So if it, if it was a situation where we were meeting the demand mm-hmm. and we were putting some glut in the market, okay. then I could understand. But when we look on the market, there is shortage of baby chicks. There's increased price in chicken. Mm-hmm. So you want to be able to supply more baby chicks and put competition in the market so you can hold the price at a place where our consumers, our Jamaican people, all over Jamaica, not just one sector, can afford this meat. This is an important source of protein for our Jamaican consumers. And we have a responsibility to make sure that we that we give them access. Yes. And the reason why we focus on leg quarters, just to be clear, is because when we look across the global market, leg quarters mm-hmm. are readily available at more competitive prices than other chicken parts currently being utilized. Right. Right. So that is why the, the proposal for the suspension was focused on that. Right, got you. Um, you also mentioned, of course, that, um, I can I tell you that's the last time I probably had, had chicken back. I was 20, but, oh my gosh, but I remember eating it. The man who eat, I was cooking it with, is a Rasta man now. But the joke is, we, we, we eat a lot of chicken back as well. Um, yeah. But chicken back has been important, has been imported. Yes. I got a text from um, another farmer that says, you know, sir, we should not be importing even chicken back itself. Yes. yes. So, so and that must be, and that, certain, that must be on your agenda to address. Listen, let me make it very clear. Mm-hmm. My goal is to bring Jamaica to a place of self-sufficiency mm-hmm. where we do not have to consider importing any part of any chicken. Mm-hmm. Where our consideration and our discussion is about why we are exporting to Argentina as opposed to the UK. That's the kind of discussion I want to have. Got you. Right? But, but we're not there yet. And so we have to approach this in a realistic way, which is why when you look at my presentation, you see I have focused on the fact 
that we have to invest in research and development. We have to invest in bringing, in widening the range of options. So it's not just about chicken, it's about small ruminants, it's about fish, yes. it's about pork. It's about yes. I, didn't, I didn't think I would actually be saying that ever in my life, considering <laughs> my, my denomination. But yeah, it's about, <laughs> it's about fire. It's about, it's about all different ranges of meat. It's yes. about looking even on the affordable meats that we import now. All right. And encouraging people to use it in many ways. Bottom line, Professor, mm-hmm. we have to feed our country. Yeah, Everybody I, I don't think I don't think there's any question at all about that yes. le- about the degree of consensus there. Uh, yes. bearing in mind everything else and COVID reminded us how fragile um, exactly. The economy is we have to feed ourselves, and exactly. since we eat whole pa chicken, and since we eat a whole pa pork, including some people who wear dreadlocks who don't want to admit it, uh, you have to yes. look at um, at, at this issue of food security. Um, what you are saying to me, though, is that in the short term, this is this is going to redound to the benefit of um, of the consumers. This is what you are saying, right. um, and in the long term, um, you are looking at a greater strategy towards increasing the capacity um, of our local suppliers, so the small farmers, etc., yes. to fill the need. Because I think it's kind of unacceptable that there's only 40% of um, the eggs, hatching eggs used by the large producers are yes. available from, local, from local farmers. No, yeah. no, no. It's, it's, it's worse than that. Yes. 75% of the eggs that provide baby chicks are imported. Oh, that ridiculous. We have, yes. we have a hatchery. We have one hatchery in Jamaica, which is Jamaica Broilers, and they are only able to provide 40% of their own fertile egg needs. Yeah. That is why you would have heard me welcoming and actively seeking more affordable market options for yeah. inputs such as baby chicks and fertile yeah. eggs. And I'm saying to people, this is an opportunity. That sounds like yes, I need yes. to sell my old car. Well, to... to, to, to to turn my old car into a cub, even though some people said it already is. Every challenge no, it's all, it's presents all, no. opportunities. Gotcha. If you are an investor in the diaspora, mm-hmm. this is an opportunity. Clearly, we are unable to meet the demand. Yes. We don't want to be focusing on importing. Yes. So, therefore, let's put together a clear and deliberate strategy that brings to Jamaica the level of production, the level of research, and yes. the level of focus to expand our small farmers so we can get those householders to be entrepreneurs, yes. but also helps our large farmers so that right. they can supply what we need here without having to look overseas. Quick question before you go, Minister. Do you actually have an active research unit or department that scientifically looks at supply and demand and those things? Yes. Sir. Just a second, please. A- Daniel says I have to take this message. No move. I beg it. Today is a good day to plant a tree, get tree seedlings at the forestry department to plant and contribute to Jamaica's effort to plant 3 million trees in three years. The time by the forestry department is now 11.30. The classroom is now open. Our children are getting back to the things they love. When they get home from school, help them to keep the family safe from COVID-19. Remind them to immediately wash hands using soap and water. Remove uniform, turn inside out. For the good of our nation. And uh, active for the good of our nation. You're listening to Radio Jamaica 94 FM and this is Hotline, where truth comes to live. Lies come to die. Orville Taylor is my name. I'm the man in black. I'm having, I'm wrapping a conversation here with Minister of Agriculture, Pernell Charles Jr. Let me tell you some people. Um, me never really do the narratives much, eh? I like to inform myself. I said this at the beginning of the show. I like to inform myself with data and research. Yeah, because um, I found that too many of the things that we do, some of the policies, are really just from people's knee-jerk reactions. And... Uh, I'm a little bit tired, especially at a time when we're talking about food security, food insecurity, etc. For us to be talking about not having enough food there of a particular type and having too much over here, that sometimes you have too much tomato, another time in another part of the country, you don't have enough and all of that. So I asked a simple question and he's about to answer. He's, he was answering me about the research capability of the Ministry of Agriculture. You are saying, Minister. All right, so... Just yesterday, 
I had a meeting with the Research and Development Division, and we have mandated them to continue the investigations and expand on the investigations to identify opportunities and to develop formulas, if we can, for feeds that will be possibly cheaper and where we can to utilize our local raw materials Mm -hmm. as alternative supplements or replacements. The bottom line is that I am focused on evolving our sector towards self-sufficiency. Our goal must be for Jamaica to feed itself, for Jamaica to be able to provide the implements that are necessary for us to have a strong and sustainable agricultural sector. Agriculture is the sector that can make this country grow in a sustainable way if we get it right. For us to get it right, we have to have a focus on research and enhancing research. And as a fundamental natural scientist myself, you Mm -hmm. know that I have my first degree in biochemistry and zoology. Yes. Nobody has to tell me about the importance of research. I think Mm -hmm. in that way. I use empirical data. You would have heard me talking about it. Mm -hmm. The 75%, the 60%, the 40%. I'm always talking about numbers Mm -hmm. because it is those numbers that drive my decisions right. and drive how we create policy and right. what we are doing in the future. Right. So I'm, and I, I get that. The other part of the research, though, of course, you know, I, and I, I'm dropping it right in my camp because we do behavior. Um, the social research, which n- doesn't just talk simply about the nuts and bolts involved in the actual development of new types of agricultural products, etc. But simply, whether the demand exists, where, you know, the kind of market demand, the kind of consumer patterns, etc. Those are the kinds of research I'm asking, whether or not we're doing. So, so we have a strategic planning yes. unit. Mm-hmm. We have a we have an international trade unit. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have several other units in the ministry focused on agricultural markets, focus on, on, on continual assessment of the fluctuations in the market um, and focused on the diversification of products in the market. So yes. yes, the answer is yes. It is something that the ministry does. Matter of fact, the ministry has a set of strategic priorities. One of those priorities include continuing to strengthen and enhance our ability to know what we are to plant by connecting it to what the people want. It's a simple economics. It's agroeconomics supply and demand okay so, right? sounds good um as time allows of course off air because we're out of time you will share some of that with me but you know i'm i like to talk from a position of knowledge and you know we do things which are in the interest of the nation i want to thank you so much minister for speaking with us oh i just got another text before you go yes. um your first degree you said and i know that too. Uh, but I'm not going to tell people that I actually look at your record, but I know that I know you a long time. Right? <laughs> um, but it's from the plantation upon which I work. Yes. Right. And so we understand that. Um, and we do know that the University of the West Indies gets per capita decent amount of money compared to other institutions. Yes. You're talking about agriculture now. Yes. Um, and in Jamaica and Pato, we say hurry. And when we say hurry, we say kiss. <laughs> right? Yes. Um, a bird is telling me that case needs to be better funded. Is that part yes. of your discussion going forward? Well, I'm going to put it this way. I will make no pronouncements on it until I've had a chance to sit down. But you can tell the bird that we are flying in the same direction. All right. It's not just about better funding. It's about looking on the complete um, connection between agriculture and education um, and also mm-hmm. putting that connection to national security. All because right. no matter how you can build up the, the, the capacity of our students to be science-thinking uh-huh. farmers, we have to deal with the last thing so that they can actually feel that they have a viable industry to be involved in. So yeah. there's a lot of connectivity. We don't have the time yeah. now, but yes. when, when next time on... That sounds like a social... Like that, that sounds like you... You were sitting outside at the source. Oh, I forgot you did Law and Society. No, but I used oh, yeah. to be outside of there for, for different reasons. I saw yeah, you outside here. I remember I that. I, I won't talk. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Charles Jr., thank you so much um, for taking the time to speak with me, to have a yeah. holistic conversation going forward. Yeah. Um, I, do, I don't know how satisfied everybody is with what you have said, but you are trying for, you to give me the answers, and, and I really appreciate that. Um, 
looking forward to more conversation, but more importantly, more action. What good? All the best to you. All the best to your listeners. All right. One love. Take it easy.